As you know, we always have a big focus on assumptions in this course, so with that, let's get right into the assumptions for independence-based causal discovery. The new assumption that we need to make for independence-based causal discovery is what's known as the faithfulness assumption. So recall the Markov assumption from week three of the course when we were introducing graphs. This assumption says that if x and y are deseparated in the graph by some conditioning set z, then that implies that x and y are conditionally independent in distribution, where they're conditioning on some conditioning set z. So this Markov assumption tells us how to go from the causal graph on the left-hand side of this implication to some statement about the distribution of the data on the right-hand side of this implication. But to do causal discovery, we really want to be able to go the other direction. We want to be able to start with data and then infer the causal graph from there. So we need an assumption that has an implication in the other direction. And this is the faithfulness assumption. It's just the converse of the Markov assumption. So using faithfulness, we can search for conditional independencies in the data. So in this data distribution P. And then once we find those, then that will tell us something about the graphical structure. It will tell us what's deseparated from what. So we haven't had to make the faithfulness assumption at all throughout this course until now. And that's good because the faithfulness assumption is a bit less attractive than the Markov assumption because it's easy to think of counterexamples to the faithfulness assumption. So here's one example for a violation of faithfulness. We'll just copy and paste the assumption here. And the common example of violation of faithfulness is to have a graph where, let's focus on A and D here, we have a graph where the association flowing from A to D is canceled out along these two different paths. So the idea here is that the blue path cancels the red path in terms of the association flowing along them. These paths are like opposites in a sense, and their associations cancel so that we get that A is independent of D in the distribution, even though A and D aren't deseparated in this graph. Okay, so if faithfulness were true, we would have that A and D are independent, which then implies that A and D are deseparated. That's what we would have if faithfulness were true, if it weren't violated. But in this example, it is violated. To make this a bit more concrete, I'm going to add some coefficients to these paths here. And what these mean is in a linear example, it corresponds to these structural equations. I haven't added any noise terms to these structural equations, but you could do the same thing with noise terms. It would just uh, be a bit less minimal of an example. Okay, so this edge from A to B corresponds to this structural equation with alpha here. From A to C is this structural equation with gamma. And then the D structural equation corresponds to these two edges coming into D with beta and delta. Then if we plug in for B and C in the structural equation for D, if we plug in their corresponding structural equations, then we get this for D in terms of A. This captures the association flowing from A to D. It's alpha times beta plus gamma times delta. And so the concrete version of the path canceling that we were graphically depicting with that blue and red arcs is if alpha times beta equals the negative of gamma times delta. So if this is the case, then this factor in front of A is equal to zero, meaning that the association that's flowing from A to D is zero. So that's an example of a violation of faithfulness, and we're assuming that we don't have these kinds of violations when we're assuming the faithfulness assumption. And then the other two assumptions are much more familiar. The first one, causal sufficiency is just a way of saying that there's no unobserved confounders of any of the variables in the graph. And the second one, acyclicity, is just what we've been doing throughout this course. The graphs are acyclic. 
So listing all the assumptions together, we have the Markov assumption still, the faithfulness assumption, causal sufficiency, and acyclicity. That brings us to the end of the assumptions section and to our first question, which is, why is the Markov assumption plus causal sufficiency and acyclicity not enough for learning causal graphs from data? 